made it. We made it. We're back. Oh, just got dressed in time. Hey, g'day everyone. Oh, I'm not sure how long we'll be streaming today. I've got some stuff to take care of from yesterday, but we'll get at least an hour in. We might even get an hour and a half. We'll see. Who knows? Oh, that's a bit tight, isn't it? It's just, oh, just life goes on. Hang on, wait a minute. I'm just trying to get dressed. I just threw my apron on and it was, oh, look at that, it's all messy. Don't care. That's it, it's going to sit like that. G'day, Ray, how are you? G'day, Andy. G'day, Prunella. G'day, John. G'day, Trevor. G'day, T-Bone. I had six, you were on yesterday. You were there. Oh, no, you weren't. No, no you were, you were. I'm getting confused, Decatur. Hey, Louise. No, it's all sort of sorted out. Got some other stuff to do, but it's all good. Ah, uh, Randy, g'day. Oh, dear. All right. Ah, oh, get out of that one. Don't need it. Wombat, good morning to you. All right, what I'm going to do today is, it's nice and cold out there today. It really is. It's, ooh, but chilly, as they say. Let me just go and put this back before I lose it again. Um, the, uh, the, the big lot of boxes that I was doing all of a sudden has become a priority again, so I've got to slip back in and do some work on those. In fact, I just want to put all the hinges on. If I can get all the hinges on these, that's it, all finished. Uh, the little fella we did the other day, I've got a few coats of shellac on him, wherever he is. There he is. So he's starting to come up quite nice. What I want to do is um, make a stand. It won't be today, but I'm umming and ahhing whether I do a walnut stand or a, an ebony stand. I don't know. There's an idea for a stand I want to do, which I've had to think about because if I did it the way, excuse me, initially you think, your fingers are going to be about half an inch or 12 mil away from a spinning router bit at 22,000 RPM, which I'm trying to avoid a lot. G'day, Philip, how are you? Welcome to the workshop. Steve, have you ever worked with uh, Brazilian walnut? Uh, Ippy, um, I honestly don't know. It doesn't ring a bell, but I do have a lot of walnuts um, and I've got a fair bit of Brazilian timber. But I don't think I have. I don't, no, I don't think I have. Someone else was talking about it. And no, I haven't. I've got Brazilian rosewood, Brazilian mahogany, Rio rosewood. Um, there's a couple other Dalbergias, which I can't think of off the top of my head. Uh, oh, Cocobola. Um, yeah, but no, I don't think I've got any epi. So there we go. Where are we go? Hail, mighty queen. How are you, your royal highness? I trust you are well. Uh, six, not yet. Yeah, was probably... Oh! Oh, that's good. Well, that's good, Ben. Oh, awesome stuff. Pass it on. Get him, get him started early. That's the way to do it. Um... Can you show us how you made your double knife? Oh, I think I did yesterday, but I'll show you again anyway. Um, G'day, Tom. How are you? Um, John ordered a complete marketry book and the second one you recommended. No, that's terrific. Um, it is a great book. It really, really is. It's got simple projects, different methods of doing things and basic tools. Uh, yeah, I'll leave it there. I mean, there's much more advanced techniques that they don't cover, but once you get the basics, you'll start discovering your own uh, likes and dislikes and which way you want to go with it, so it is all good. I've just realised I wear my glasses all the time now. <laughs> I think it was only, last year I was only wearing them part of the time, but they're on all the time. So now you'll enjoy, you'll both enjoy those books, John. Yeah, it's a cute little dog box there. It's just a bit of fun, but uh, I'll, yeah, the stand I want to make for it is quite ornate. Although I might even, yeah, I might even make one for that 
box I'll put the patera in, which has got, I think that's ebony or is it wench? No, it's ebony. Ebony edge banding on it. Um, so, because I really want to make an ebony stand. So I think they look quite elegant. Uh, what have we got? Do, 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 do. T-Bone, your problem is it's hard to stay in dark colour. E-Pay. E-Pay. Uh, yeah, I, possibly I don't. I haven't. But there's a lot of dark art stuff out there, I tell you. Uh, where are we? G'day, Chad! Prunella, I'm well enough. Started taking to my knitting yesterday, so today I visited my family to celebrate. Yahoo! Good stuff. Um, I, I should have sent you that knitting bowl. I took it to the lady down the road. She's using it now, which is good. Uh, good day, Devon. Woodwork learner, finish that oak box I mentioned at last year's hard wax finish total. A one pound. How good is that? That's the way to do woodwork. <laughs> Be nice if I could do stuff for a pound. Max, good morning to you, oh lucky one. Um, okay, first of all, I just want to, I've got to fit all these hinges, so it's mostly going to be as boring as bat uh, stuff. I've just got to rip some timber down because yesterday I was finishing the spindles off for the blender cabinet, which I started ages ago and sort of got sidetracked on jobs, so I said I'll get into it. And I mufflicated one of these, so I'm going to machine up um, one of those. Um, 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 actually, I might machine up a longer bit because that I can't use for anything. But because Blue Ren wants a rolling pin, um, I'll do that very shortly. But the interesting thing I thought I would share with you is. If you find your... I wanted to finish veneering this, but I can't because my glue pot stove's gone ta -das, or else I'd finish putting veneer on, on this box. But if you ever wanted to get into making these... I did that a year ago, according to Facebook. This uh, shape of box, which is like a concave casket with a convex serpentine top, you will find that you will have some very interesting challenges when it cut, comes to cutting the 45 degree angle on the side. Be <coughs> Excuse me. Because it starts out straight, nice and square, which isn't a problem. But once you cut one, because it's concaved, you end up you don't have that straight line anymore. You've, you don't have that straight line anymore. You've got a gap in it. So you can't put it up against the fence and cut it the way you cut it before because it's going to be on a tangent or an angle. So I'll show you how I overcame that. It, it took a bit of thinking. I tell you, it took a... And there's a process that you have to follow the process because if you do it backwards or you miss a step, you're in a whole world of hurt. So I'll show you how to do that very shortly. Oh dear, where are we going? G'day, Jared, how are you? Yeah, Bob's here. So Bob's funny, I've got this door open. Oh. I've got that door open and the big roller door open to the main shed because it's nice and cool today. And the door behind there is open. So, no, Bob doesn't want to come in the house, in, <laughs> into the shed. He's more than happy to stay outside because he can hear my voice. In fact, I reckon, I reckon he'd, he'd be sitting out there in the sun. Is he? He is, but the camera won't stretch that far. Or else I'll take you out there. Oh, dear. It is all good. <clears throat> uh. Yo, 
Well, you are get you are powering Prunella. First of all, you get into knitting, you've been making pancakes. Started off looking like waffles. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all what they start out like. It's what they taste like that's important. Mm. Oh, well, that's good, John. Thanks. It's good to know we're doing something. Oh, and say good day. Well, I'll say good day. Good day, Yvonne. How are you? Hope you are well. Oh, okay. Now, first of all, I'm going to rip this because, oh, hang on, do I want, no, 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 I'll show you the tricks involved with cutting double mitres on um, curved box. Then what I want to do is actually take it and glue it up. That I can do, I can't do any veneering because as I said, my induction hot top, uh, the thermostat's gone on it. So I've ordered a new one, should be here next week, and then we get back into hide gluing, which will be good. Ha! Oh, deep breath, heavy sigh. Oh, there was another um, marketry book too, which I meant to bring down, and I can't Oh, yeah, it's just an exquisite book. I, sh I will, I'll go and get it in a little bit. It was done by uh, a chap in New Zealand. And it's not how to do marketry, but it was um, a chronological history, I guess, of his ancestry from the early 1800s. And his grandparents, great-great-great-great-grandfather or great-grandfather, can't work out which, had these shops and the exquisite inlaid marketry they did was just phenomenal. Safit, um, the Safit legacy is what the book's called, and if I get time, I'll dash up and get it. All right, so we might go over and I'll show you tricks with um, doing these, and then we'll glue another wavy box up. I've also have I oh, will all be over there with pancakes and get sourced at the same time. Okay. Um, doesn't matter if these aren't the same lengths to start with, but it'd be nice if they were. Yeah, they are, so that's all right. All right, let's go over to the saw. That one. Bada bum, bada ba dum. I need that there so that can go there for the moment. So, this is the process I came up with. And you do have to have machines for this. You could do it by hand, but I'm not, I'm not that keen. Set your saw blade to 45 degrees. I'm just seeing if I can, actually I might even be able to. Might even be able to get this over there. And then you get a, a better idea of what I'm trying to do. There you go, okay. So set your blade to 45 degrees. It's got to come out a fair way because it has to take into account this thick bit at the end here. And you can, if you want, use a fence. Uh, sorry, a uh, mitre box. But I'm just going to use the fence. And here we go. Hold it very firmly into the fence. So now you're just going to creep up on it. I 
I said it's going to come in. At 10 mil, I'll bring that in. That's going to be very, very close. Not quite close enough. delaminate so I'll have to actually I'll quickly do that now then when we come to glue it together it should be tight oh there we go here's this it's a bit slack It's always fun working with weird angles. There we go. Um, bum, bum, bum. Better to get it glued up now. There's Bobby's going off for something. Better to get it glued up now than when we're trying to put it together. As I said, this process for making these boxes actually took me over 10 years and I'm still learning how to get it right. All right, back over. We'll cut the other one. So it'll be the opposite way this time, but it doesn't matter. And so instead of, oh no, it doesn't matter. We can go that way. Or we can go that way. Let's go this way. Does it matter? Hang on. I got. I got to second guess myself. No, no, no. It's right. Doesn't matter. So here we go. Now this is what I was talking about. The problem you're gonna have 
if you try and do that the other side the same way because if we put that against there, it's not straight anymore. So it's going to cut at an angle. So what to do, you could, you could, no you can't. I'm just thinking on my feet here, no, that's not going to work. <clears throat> so what I do is I actually come over to the docking saw and then on the docking saw, let's see, just pull this over. Oh dear. You drop your cutter head to 45 degrees, and then you can come and put this up against this fence and cut that at 45 degrees. And that will give you what you're looking for. Uh, let me move this around this side so maybe you can see. You've got to creep on that, creep on up on it a little bit to get the right height. There we go. And that way we've got two lots of 45 degrees, which I'm happy with. Let's go and do that to this other one if it's the glue's. Right, not quite. So I'll leave that there to dry for a tick. The other thing you've got to make sure if you're going to glue it up is this shoulder, this shoulder here is the same height as the top of this edge. So if we go here, You'll notice that is oh, maybe an eighth to three sixteenths of an inch higher here. Obviously, well, you can. You can carve that down if you like, but you're much better off just to take it off the base. So that is what I'm going to do. Boom, boom, boom. And also, which we will find out. Hello, my darling. Hi, Maudie. <laughs> you haven't got bad news for me today? No, no, no. Bad news today. Oh, oh, that's good. I'll be up. I might, I'll see how I go, but I might come up a bit early and we'll see if we no can. No news today. Two news, no news is good news. Yeah. Well, you just come over here. Because, cousin. Colourful. Look, it erupts when you walk in. <laughs> G'day, Jeff. Jeff's G'day, Tony. How are you? G'day, Wes. G'day, Earl. I'm just catching up over on the snuck in while I've been working. James, good morning. Is he up yet? No. I haven't even been in to see him. Done what I had to, and that's it. <laughs> G'day, French Lord. I think that's just about everyone. All right, we'll get down to here. Oh, uh, let me see. Hi, Sue. Great seeing you again. Hi there, Steve. Oh, I've said that was Tony. Earl says hi, Sue. Races. Expression says. 
Well, hi, Sue. With here, you go. What you got? I've got. Oh, you got another quillet. I've got another. Oh, a seven one. dwarfs one. Yes, no ice. This, there you go. You go for a walk backwards. There you go. No, walk back though. No, you walk back. I am walking back. Yeah, but I can't. That's it. Then I can get the tension on it. So there you go. That's all nicely padded. Yes. And who's that one for? I don't know yet. You don't know. Oh, I've got to make up my mind. There you go. <laughs> and there's the dwarfs. Is there seven of them down there? I think there might be. One, two, three, four, seven, five, seven. six. Oh, seven. Okay. Do you know them? Can you name them? Grumpy. No, that's me. No. Yeah, okay. Sneezy, Hang on. Happy. Okay. Point, you got a point. Hang on to that bit there. Okay. Dopey. That's grumpy. Yeah, there's dopey. Is that dopey? I don't know. There's sneezy. <laughs> That's doc. Doc, yeah. I forgot one of the names. <laughs> Blower Bashful, yeah, was he one? Yeah. So, I don't know. Anyway. There you go. You're done. That's I'll nice. Have, I'll have to catch up on the, the, all the seven dwarfs. You will, won't you? See, <laughs> so that other little chilling. Angie wants that. I need to buy that quilt now. Done. <laughs> Send me an email. Where's, what is it? Admin, <laughs> admin at Woodworking Masterclass. And I'll tell you what you want for it. Yep. It's not too bad, actually. No. It's not. It's nice. I like that one. Oh, Andrew loves it too. Doesn't need anything. Um, Got to love quilt panels. Yeah, they cut a lot of the stuff out, don't they? Mm. Mm. Uh, Keeps me out of mischief. Does. Keeps keep fabric shops in business. <laughs> oh, did I bring down that orange stuff? I don't know. No, I might have left that up at... I'm doing cheeky bibs at the moment. Oh, yeah? You got any made? Oh, uh, not at the moment. I'm still going. Oh, I'm just reading it. Yeah, yeah, you go on before you... Res oh, okay. Puh! Puh! I swallow me teeth. <clears throat> Reg says, hi, morning, good morning, good morning. Tony says, wow, that's amazing. Prunella loves it. Ray said, um... I can't decide now. Shop Shopkins... All the Snow White one. There you go. Uh, James said, that's involved. Andy says, it's awesome. Um, where are we? Nice job. Angie wants to tell us, Wes. I love how the borders are quilted as well. That is so cool. Hey, she's, she's great. That was a fun. You can come back and say That was Tony. Oh, Got to get that email back to Tony. Yes. Hi, Sue. Uh, you didn't tell me how... To... Oh, there you go. <laughs> I just said that. We've got to do that. We had, had a couple of things on our plate lately, which has yeah. sort of knocked us back a bit. Um, this is strange. I'm seeing everyone comment about Sue, but I'm seeing Sue right now. Uh, check to see if your stream is live or on delay. Oh, OK. Uh, Thugador! Hola! Hola, my friend. Amigo, I think. There you go. Everything right. Uh, red light. He's Stephen said, so, OK, when you get to it. There you go. All right. Soon. 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 I love you. I think we're good people. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. I'll, I'll bring down some cheeky bibs tomorrow. Cheeky bibs. Cheeky bibs. That's it. Bibs with cheeky sayings on them. Oh, right. I spit and I gurgle and I gargle, but you still love me. No, something like the fact that I'm Grandpa's girl. Oh, we know who Grandpa's boy is. Hey, he's up, he's up doing his schoolwork. Did I tell you what happened? Anthony knocked off one of his croissants. Yes. Yeah. So I gave him a packet of biscuits to make up he for He said it. that made up for it. Yeah, a packet of ice vovos. So there you go. One packet of ice vovos is equal to a chocolate croissant. 
Hadi. Ah. bum bum. Steve, can I PM you in favour? Yes, mate. Not a drama. You can do that. That is okay. Yep. Not a problem. Now I have the music. <laughs> Oh dear. At least you, you're not the bad queen, Prunella. You're a, you're a uh, what is it? A benevolent dictator. There you go. <coughs> uh, all right. Okay. Oh, Shink, oh, give some mooch. Um, yeah, Bricky. Yes. Right. And everything went all right? Yes. The thing has? Everything. Oh, okay. All right. I see you. Hey? You love me dog. He's cute, isn't he? Yeah. Do you love him a real dog? <laughs> she, she likes the dog I put on the box, but she's not happy with Bob. Anyway, there you go. Ah, G'day, Roscoe. Ah. Um, bom, bom, bom. Now, let me see. What are we going to do? Oh, that's right. Um, I'll just go and cut the bottom off of this. So you can, oh, well, I'll take the thing back over because I'm going to have to work out how to line it up and it could take a bit. So it really doesn't matter when, you, when you're doing those initial cuts over here on the saw. And as I said, you've got to have a lot of pressure on that fence or else it will kick and buckle on you and give you a fright. Um, so now I'm going to mark where I want that final cut to be. Where's the peninsula? I need a peninsula. Oh, I was reading, reading that book the other day. I showed you, um, oh, what was it called? I've forgotten. Arts and Craft and Contemporary History or whatever. Uh, Kevin Riddell. Oh, and I saw something there and I thought, I'm going to have to make that. It is just the best looking chest I have seen. It's like an old sea chest, but... Really, really rustic. It's an oak, very heavy with exposed joints. And I thought, yep, I like that. All right. We'll cut this and see how close we can get to uh, the perfect. Bada boom. Take it short. And then I'll sneak up on it. Should be the same length now. Hopefully. No, it's going to take a little bit more off of <coughs> this one. Just a smidgen. Bo-bo-bo. 
This is where you get the, the juggling match. That's, that's pretty close, but it's not quite close enough. So might have to just take a smidgen off of this one. Because if they're not spot on, they will not give you a square box. That is so close. I'm going to take that off with hand plane. I think, I think I will. look that's lined up there and there you look here this one's just got to come down just a little bit if we can find need a good sharp. I reckon. Oh, let me try number two. I don't want to flatten the curve out. That's close, pretty close. I reckon that that is close enough for our purposes. <clears throat> oh. Okay. But um but um
Lady, oh, done, no, don't, no, don't give a lady as well. For goodness sake, Tony. <laughs> lady P. From Thunderbirds, yeah, oh, she's all right. I don't mind Lady P. That's true. Where's I'm, I'm waiting for stuff, and yeah, it's it's taken a while to get here, which is a bit frustrating. But anyway, I think I'm I'm nearly caught up, aren't I? Mm. Okay, now I've got to. Plane this down, so then they're going to be the same height. But what I actually need is this back corner has to be the same height as this inside corner. I can't do it there. The inside corners have to meet, and then this part will get a slope on it to marry up with the slope on the end. So wherever the top is, so the top, when it goes on, move the camera, it's going to be easier. So when the top goes on, it'll slope down over here and we'll get a better gluing, gluing contact. So first things first, got to, um, see, I'm not sure what say. I might even do that on the saw. Yeah, I think. I think, I think, I think we'll plane it down. Find a sharp pencil or any of these. I'm trying to find a, an apple in a grape orchard in the vineyard. There we go, that'll do. <coughs> that will do. Okay, so I'm going to mark this. Here. That's how much I've got to take off of the bottom. It's not the easiest thing to set your marking gauge to, but there we go. And it's not going to be the easiest thing to hold either. Bit of water in there. That will help. Where the flattest part of the curve is, put that part into the vice. Now, we'll start, is that coming away too? A little bit. Oh. I'll try this one. Wax 
so. Ja. This is plywood, which is notoriously hard on planes because of the glue that's in there. Okay. Usual thing, I'm high on the inside. That's pretty. Pretty darn close, I think. That's square there all the way down. Now we just put it up against, see how we go. Okay, I've got a bit more to take off with that yet. But it's coming, it's coming down, just a smidgen more to go. So I might even use a five and a half. It's got a little bit more weight to it. Bit more weight. Easier to play with. That's a lot better. Still got a bit to come down. Okay, and that's pretty good there. If you... See that? That inside edge is now level with this, and then all we have to do is chamfer this off to bring it down level to that. Pretty close. A little bit up here that I can knock off. Not too much. Alright, but that's, if you can see that joint there. It's pretty close to what we're looking at. Take a bit off the bottom of this one. Actually, we can, we can cheat and do this the easy way. Line them up at the top. 
and then just draw a line along there. Set your marking gauge to that line, which is pretty close to what we had. And mark it on the other side. Same thing, do it again. Just a little bit more to come off, not much. Not much at all. This I will glue up and put into the vacuum press. And we do it all in one. Well, maybe, we'll see. I'd like to do it in one big glue up. We'll have to wait and see. Still got a little bit to go. See how square it is. A little bit more. Not much. So what I'm doing is evening in up to this one here and we've still got a little bit of a lip. Not much of one, but there is a slight lip there. I could, I suppose, I could, uh, I don't know, I, I could go over to the sander and take it off on the sander, but I'll give it another couple of hits with the plane first, I think. So close, it's ridiculous. Okay, now they're even. Tad on that side, but I don't know if that's. I might just knock a bit off this end. Okay, if that's the case, I know where the problem is. inside there we have it that is good now 
it here. This this wasn't meant to take this long. It was meant to be fitting hinges. That's all right there. It's not too bad there. That's good. That's got to have a bit taken off of there, that side. Um, what I'm actually going to, I was going to try and glue this up in one glue up, but I won't. I'll glue it up in two so we get the carcass done first. And then what I can do is feather in the top. I mean, that's a pretty darn good fit there. So I don't want to rush this at the same time. We'll just glue this up by itself, I think. Let's see how we go. Then we can put a final shape on it down the track. Uh, rubber bands, that's what I want. See if I can get into my fridge. It's going to be good enough, I think. Just, 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 just thinking. No. I was thinking of uh, veneering it, but because my hide glue cooktop isn't working, I won't. We'll just glue it up. Double glue, so you put glue on both edges. Boom, 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 boom. These, these are really nice because they're they're different. Square boxes are good. Hexagonal is good, octagonal are good, but these just open a whole new area of box making, I think. As I have said before, there's a couple of box makers, oh, that's not good. A couple of box makers have made these before, but I don't particularly like the way they made them. Hence, 
I do them this way. There we go. That uh, bit that I glued on earlier, when it flattened out, it protruded a little bit, which doesn't give us a really good join. So that's it. Here we go. Fingers crossed. Eyes crossed. Everything crossed. Once you've got one rubber band on, the rest are easy, but that first one sometimes can be an absolute doozy if it doesn't want to go on properly. And if you've got any um, differences in the angles, now is the time to fix them. They say, speak now or forever hold your peace. Now we can double, double check the squareness of it by doing the diagonals. Do an internal diagonal. That's close enough to 26 and a half. And this way is close enough to 26 and a half. So that is square. For whatever reason, I've got a slight gap on the inside. So all I'm going to do is just pressure some glue into that. And it just fills in a gap. Doing, doing these um, is a lot harder to do without getting a gap in there. So I don't see there's anything wrong with just putting a bead of glue in and rubbing down the corner like I've done there for security. And there you have it. And that fits on there. Pretty darn well as well. I don't know if you can see down there, but so once once um, the box is dried, then I clean up these angles and we'll put that top on, and I'll do that in the vacuum press. You can do it, and I have done it just with F-clamps. But if you've got a vacuum press, it's like, yes, I can walk to town if I want to, but I've got a car, so why walk? i to get this down as low as I can. Corners there, and we'll put one in the middle. Did 
The uh, rubber bands I'm using, these particular ones are 107s. For smaller boxes I use 105s and for larger boxes I use 109s. And I keep them in the fridge, that way they won't perish. That is good. Put a little bit more in there. Get rid of any air bubbles. Okay. That's one convexed sided box. There's the top. We'll fit that later on. I'll just go and put that over so it's out of harm's way. I'll have a chat and then I'll start fitting hinges, of which I've got all these ones to do. Ah, there we go. Where are we? Oh, I'll go back 10 minutes. Thought we were going to mention more. No, no, I'm not using a router yet. Not today. Yeah, they are. They're absolutely brilliant. Actually, well, I'll just nick up to the house. So, you have a game of noughts and crosses or whatever. And um, I'll show you this one, the Savit Legacy. It is absolutely gorgeous. Hey Bob, how you going mate?
Oh, I found another one too. It, it's not so much a marketry one. Well, it is marketry, but it um, goes back. And Jack Metcalf, who did the uh, basic marketry course, uh, that's his latest one, I think, came out last year. And what he actually does, you know, when, when did it come out? Normally they have the the year it was done. I think it was only last year. Doesn't have a date. But I'm pretty sure it was last year. Um, yeah, what he does, he goes through it all and goes through what Chippendale did and how they obtained all their different colours. Um, yeah, some weird concoctions they put together. And then you've got projects there if you actually wanted to follow what he did. Uh, not over impressed with the quality of the paper in the book. It was, I think it was over a hundred bucks for the book, but it, it, the paper quality is a bit ordinary. But the information is good, and that's what they would have looked like. That's how it looks now after the sun's got at it. But when it was made, that's how it would have looked with all those colours. So it is it's quite an interesting read of how they did it and what they did and different skills involved. Okay, that's that one. This is a Savite, Safit. I think it is, uh, Legacy. And, yeah, they, they were New Zealanders, but some of the work, I just wish they still had a market for some of this stuff. A lot of um, Maori uh, illustrations, but birds, flowers. These I love. I just love their, their glove boxes that ladies used to put their gloves in. And other boxes, that's a, quite a popular size box that I make. But the marquetry is just phenomenal. And this one here, this cabinet here, which if I can find the... This just cracked me up. Uh, where was it? It's, don't have craftsmanship like that anymore. That's a, that, that's a bookcase. They didn't make that. Oh, did they make that? Um, yeah, it was made in the company where he was foreman before he branched out on his own. Where is this? It's a gorgeous cabinet in here. Ah, that, that cabinet there was made and presented to, made for and presented to, who later became Lord Baden-Powell, the founder of the Scout organisation, but at that stage he was a Major General, so Major General Robert Powell, and they raised funds in the community to get that built and it cost £200. Can you imagine that? Two hundred pounds. I look at that now, and you know, you at least a quarter of a million dollars, at least, possibly four hundred thousand, um, time-wise. So anyway, but yeah, that was that was a, a great little book. The guy's a pilot, and uh, he put together that book, so you can buy that online from him direct. And I bought this one down again, which, as I mentioned. Yesterday is in French. This is the English version. But to show you this, which I just, if I can find it, generally opens at the right spot. Look, there you go. That is 
Louis XV's desk. Let's get me the picture so you can see it. And that took 109 craftsmen five years to make. Can you imagine that? Five years and 109 people working on it to make one desk. And around the other side, which I reckon is absolutely terrific, um, Jeff Hanna, when he went over and did his Churchill Fellowship, he, he actually had a private tour through the Palace of Versailles and he's got a photograph of the other side of the desk, around the front of the desk. And it's got a great big split up it because that marquetry was done on solid timber, not on plywood. So there you go. Oh, to bring back the old crafts, wouldn't it be lovely? Oh. Yeah, I'll put these out somewhere else because, or else... They'll get something on them, which isn't good. And the thing I love about books as opposed to the net is, 10 years later, I can go back and what I can remember is still in that book. Whereas you go looking for something on the net you saw yesterday, and it's gone now, gonski. Oops, wrong way. Come here. Done. All right, let's tidy this desk up a bit. There's conjecture on that. I think my dad wrote some episodes of Skippy, but I can't, I can't remember. I know he wrote The Rovers, which sort of was a spin-off of Skippy. But there you go. Uh, bottom. Yeah, that's good advice. Woodwork learner, Andy, don't be scared. Just be cautious. Treat it with respect. Look, you, you're still going to have, you know, odd things happen, accidents. That's why they're called accidents. You don't plan it. But if you go in knowing, there was a comment the other day. I was doing something and someone commented, there's a wasp, go away. Commented, you know, uh, something or other could happen. And yes, he, he was absolutely right. It could have happened. But the thing was I knew it could happen, so therefore I was bracing myself a certain way to prevent it from happening. Like when I was putting those angles through the table saw, there was a lot of pressure I had against that fence and I was taking it very, very slowly. If you had pushed that through and not held it tightly against the fence, it would have kinked in the saw, given you a kickback and taken years off your life, Max. <clears throat> Keep the rubber bands in the fridge. Yeah, the reason I do that, Dobie, I don't know if I explained that, was they don't perish. If you leave rubber bands out in the workshop, some of those rubber bands I was using are over 10 years old because they've been in the fridge. Whereas I've had them, you leave them out after a couple of years, you go like that, the elasticity's gone out and they perish, they break. So rubber bands in the fridge, they last forever. Uh. Dun, dun. Oh, good day, Davey. If that was the case, I hadn't said good day. 
It's true, James, not so, Steve says. It's true. Uh, John, OK, I have a question about glue. How do you know how much glue to put on? You can never put enough glue on, John. That's, that's, that's my theory, and I've worked with that for many, many years. If you put too much on, it's going to squeeze out and make a mess. So what you do is you put less glue on, so when it squeezes out, it doesn't make as big a mess. But I maintain you can never use too much glue in most instances. There's always, excuse me, there's always exceptions to the rule. Laying marker tree is an exception. But if you've got too much glue in there, the excess will squeeze out. Don't be cheap with glue. Yeah, James, on too little glue is very bad. Too much glue can be cleaned up. Absolutely. I remember making, when I, well, years and years, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, I, don't know, I was making chopping boards and I was using a product, but I don't know if it's still around, but it's called Sally's product, um, 308. It was a three part formaldehyde mix. Had formaldehyde, hardener, and water. And because it was expensive, I used to use a little bit, and then if I drop a chopping board on the ground, it'd break. So after a while, I realized, no. Nope, just use glue. Welcome back, Randy. You've never seen what, as I said, Tony, it's taken me 10 years not to perfect that shape, but to perfect the process. Um, high glue is the same, Roscoe. It just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You get squeezed out, it cleans up. Yeah, the big problem, a lot of people do do cur curved boxes. I did have one around here, a very early one. But the, it's easy enough to curve the sides. The challenge is to curve the outside but leave the inside square. You can do it with uh, curve cutting, um, cross cutting on the bandsaw, which I think I did on a job a while ago. You actually set up a fence at an angle to the, the saw and then you run it over the saw at an angle, that'll give you a curve, but it will give you a symmetrical curve. Unless you have a tilt facility, and then if you've got a tilt facility, you can get an asymmetrical serve, curve. But it's very hard to get a flat before the curve, which my boxes start off flat and then curve out. And the reason I want them to go flat is later on if I want to put a lock in there, I can actually mortise a lock in and the uh, escutcheon will sit flat. Oh, dear. Yeah, well, got bicycle tubes, much the same as um, rubber bands, I guess, Randy. Good morning, Mike. Afternoon, evening. How are you, mate? Good to have you back in the shed. Yeah, ratchet straps are good, but they don't work real well on concaved or convex surfaces. Convex surface, yeah, maybe, but concave surfaces, they have a tendency of sliding to the bottom of the curve. Max, John, put enough glue so that there is a little bead out. Yeah, that's true. <whistles> mission style cherry timber. Are you making something in mission style? Or, g'day, oh, well, first of all, g'day, Dean. Are you making mission style furniture or do you think that box is mission style? Because I've, I've never thought of Spanish influence in it, but perhaps it does. Who knows? Oh. <whistles> Steve will have to watch the reruns. <laughs> now, you know, I don't. As soon as I, I never go and look at them again, I just... 
if, if I do, and what I will do, I think, over time, is I know there's been some very short segments I've done. I'll, I'll brush through and pull them out and I'll put them up as standalone videos. But no, I just, stream's done, done. That's it. So I'm sorry if I miss your comments. Okay, now. All right. Oh, no, I'll just rip this up first. What do I want that out? Because if I don't do it now, it's one of those things. I was making the rest of the spindles for that um, thing I'm making. Seriously, so here we go. I'll go 60. If I don't do it now, I won't get around to doing it. Here we go. And if I don't get around to doing it, it means I won't finish it. And if I don't finish it, it means I'm going to get nagged. And we all, all know us that. That's low, don't we, Trevor? <sighs> boom, ba, boom, boom. Um, yeah, so this is just four. Oh, I was going to, no, I was going to do a different one, wasn't I? Because I'm going to have too much wastage there. Let me see what I've got. Hang on, let's go out here. Boom, ba, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Isn't it marvellous? It doesn't matter what you put down or where you put it, that's the next thing you want to flip and well use. Oh! Jeez, that hurt. Oh, guess what? I found a bit of timber I was looking for and just fell on my leg. Oh. Mortuals pain. You rotten thing. All right, so we might machine that. <laughs> Seeing it fell on my leg. Oh, you should have safety boots on. Yeah, guess what? It would have missed the toe cap, so they wouldn't have worked. Oh, oh my foot. Uh, let's see. Boom, ba -dum. Yeah, you got a big, big flat. Yeah, that big lump of wood there just fell right on the top of the bones of my feet. Ouch. Oh. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, now, where am I? What am I? <laughs> what did you hear? <laughs> I was standing here looking at that shotgun. Oh, I better go and machine that. I forgot all about you. All right, I'll go and machine it. Um, 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 um. Let's go. Let's go, Pinocchio. Oop, yeah.
way. Just whack it through the thickness up. It's nice and dressed. I'll cut this up. Where are we? I'll go back a couple of minutes. Oh, Tyler said that the question about glue was answered and says, Oh, thanks, Tyler. Not a drama. the corner got me right across the top of my foot. <whistles> oh, I think it will leave a mark, yeah. <laughs> it does, Jeff, it does. My, my shop is telling me it needs to tidy up, but my, my body tells me I haven't got time. <laughs> I can stream or I can tidy, but I can't do both. Nah, but there wasn't, was there, Max? I, I, I think I contained that very well. <laughs> for just for the record, it still hurts. See you, Tony. Thanks for dropping in. Oh, no, no. It's nice to have the shed open. Absolutely, Dean.
Flood warning. Ooh. We get flooded here. We don't actually get flooded here. The backyard goes under a bit, but I've put a lot of drains in, so we might not next time. See you, Roscoe. Thanks for dropping in. It's raining down there. Well, there you go, James. No, we're not getting any of that up here. In fact, it's getting cool enough. I, I, I can start finishing spraying the roof, which would be nice. Oh, see, Trevor, I've got, I've got nothing on that. Is there anything in Australia now to absorb the moisture? Yeah, we still got a lot of dirt. Oh, look at it. You look at all this snow and rain. And, oh, I'm feeling quite blessed here in the little shed. Morning, Craig. What do I wear around my ankle? Oh, these things. Ah. Uh. They're called, I don't know, what, they're called anklets or, or sock savers. Um, about $8 a pair. And what it does, obviously, if you're working and you're getting sawdust and everything, see, it doesn't go down there. If you're welding, you don't get hot stuff going down there melting your socks and burning your skin. So I think yeah, anklets or uh, anklets, gaiters or sock savers, I think there's the names for them. No, I'm not using, no, I'm going to use a saw. Saw. <laughs> Do you want two bobs to go on your arc, Max? Mm -hmm. oh, I've got socks under there, Trevor. Shop gators, there you go. Mini gators, well, there you go. Um, yeah, Dobie, all I do is, as I did the other day, you just get, uh, well, number one, if you use it a lot, it won't get uh, rust on it. Um, but if you just get a bit of candle wax, a bit of, uh, not beeswax, but paraffin wax, and just rub it on the metal surface and then clean it with a bit of scotch Brite. Actually, when I go over to the saw, I'll do it on the saw table to show you. You'll see how good it is. Dean, do they come in colours? The only ones I've seen are recently are blue and khaki, navy blue and khaki. And I believe he used to be able to get him in green. Did Daniel come in? Oh, no, there you go. Oh, I just see another name. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, I, they're not that expensive. Chaffs, okay. You know, and <laughs> you'll have two bobby dogs. Mate, you could have two with the one, I tell you. He's the size of a horse. Fire engine, well, you can always die him. All right, let's go over and um, set the saw up, and I'll do, I'll do what I do, what I do to my metal surfaces, so you can see. Let's see if I can find a Scotch Bright thing that I had yesterday. Just every chance in the world, oh, there it is. Every chance in the world I can't, but I just spied some. Oh dear. So are we over on the saw yet? No. All right, let's take you over on the saw. And, and the good thing is, not only does it keep your um, bench from rusty, it keeps the lubrication going so you um, always have wax there in your uh, timber goes a lot easier. Now that's that's a block or well, that's a candle or this is what I make and use because oh, it's handy. I just remelt the wax and making it it's it's like a surfboard. If you haven't been surfing it's like surfboard wax size. And all you do is just Rub it over your tabletop. 
So you can get a smear on it, like that. That's got a bit of rust there. And then a bit of Scotch-Brite nylon, and just rub it off. In fact, you're rubbing it in. And you will find, oh, you will, you will find your wife sneaking up behind you. Were you watching the stream and I was talking about you nagging me? Um, <laughs> No, you don't nag. So that, that's it. And that will stay nice and bright. And you'll find your timber, when you're using it, will just slide. I mean, look at that. That's just awesome. Hang on, Bosch wants me. Yes, darling, what's the go? I thought you were going to go this way. I thought you um, needed some stuff. Yeah, no, I'll go up later. And I just want to get... Start on these hinges, mm. and then we might um, go into. What can you wait? Yeah. All right. How's he going? Is he going all right? Yeah, he's good. Oh, that's good. It's okay now. Oh dear, fun time. again. Yep, that's all you gotta do. Time, patience, and a lot of love. That's right. And the occasional boot up the backside. I'm. <laughs> all right. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Oh yeah. Okay. So that's how I. Keep the table nice and slippery and rust free. Let's go over there. And I'll just rip this. And then I've got to change the angle. I went many, 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 many years without a saw that would have a tilt on it like that. And I was still able to do a lot of work. So if you don't have a tilting table, don't think you can't do stuff, because you can. OK. What else I was going to do? 50, 55. It's about there. Ah. Uh, hang on, now we'll cut this. Okay, we'll cut that there. We'll do that. And then, blue wren, there's your rolling pin. That way, I'm not wasting, not wasting timber. And this one. Oh. Well, cut up. I wish, honestly wish, you could smell this. Smell is brilliant.
Africa. Beautiful. Oh, grab that down. I don't think I needed that high again. Okay, so that's that's a job for later on in the day. Ah, oh, this bit I can go and put away so I don't. I might put it somewhere so it'll fall on my leg again. That'd be good. <laughs> be nice just to wake up with that feeling. Ah, right. Now get, get back to doing what I originally wanted to do when I started. And putting hinges on these boxes because all of a sudden they've gone from the back burner to a priority. Um, let me just have a look at this box here. We might. Oh, let's just have a. Da, 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 da. No, I think we'll. No, I'll do that one tomorrow. I'll glue the lid on that one tomorrow. Oh. All right. Grab a box, any box. I'm just looking to see which has got the nicest pattern on the front. Which I think that one has to. This is going to be the back. These are the hinges I'm going to use. That's my hinge placement jig that we made before. Let me have a chat first. Um... Get two pairs. So you got one in the wash, John. <laughs> Tell Eve on two pairs. One in the wash and one on your feet. Yeah, now we've got to go and do some stuff. But I, we're that close to two hours, we might keep going because I really want to get this started. Mm, being dragged away. <laughs> I know the feeling, Jeff. It's always nice, Dean, uh, to pass something off to someone else, isn't it? I always used to like, I always used to see myself as maybe a captain. I didn't mind being a captain because you had charge of the troops and you had a certain amount of autonomy, but when the real big issues came, you could throw it up the line to the majors and the colonels and they could sort it out. No, I never was a captain, but I like that rank of captain. You've got someone above you. You're not down the bottom, but you're not right at the top either. Oh, don't you get lost, Trevor. Uh, that timber I saw in there was called Coachwood. Oh, I can still smell it. It is gorgeous. It's just like hot caramel sauce. Oh, it's lovely. <laughs> I 
Oh, no, you're lucky they don't, because sometimes, Bob, you wouldn't really want to be near him with smell vision Oh, well, did you get anything, Trevor? Was there anything nice or just bills? <laughs> Poor Trevor. Oh, dear. All right, I'm going to make another one of those things up because I've lost the other one. They, a minute, wait, what have we got here? Oh, that'll do. See, it's, it's good to have a messy floor because you can just get stuff. Now, what I'm doing here is just making a, a spacer. I'll get away with one, actually. Um, so when I put the hinges on, they don't bind. Sometimes you'll see people, they'll put a hinge. Oh, shifik. They'll put a... <laughs> I'm having a good day. <laughs> you ask my foot. They'll put a hinge on, and then when they actually... Shut the box, it doesn't shut nicely. And it um, kicks up a little bit. And the reason for that is they haven't left a gap for the hinge to operate. So where's, where's one of mine? Here you go. Oh. You want a box that when it... Well, look at that. Got to get around to finishing these ones. That's meant to be in there. When it shuts, it shuts nicely like that, whereas a lot of the times it'll be there. And you can tell when they're like that because then people will push it down and they'll put a catch on it or something like that. And the only reason it's sprung is because they haven't allowed enough at the back. And what happens is, what camera are we on? They don't leave enough space between these two pieces here, this part of the top and this part of the bottom, and these inside corners connect on each other and don't allow them to go all the way down. Whereas if you have an air gap there, that's what happens. But you don't have an unsightly gap in the back because you actually recess the hinges in, which is what we're going to do now, or I'll start to do it. If I don't finish them, that's all right, I'll finish them tomorrow, because they've got to get done. So the air gap, I find, is a two, oh, sometimes two pieces of veneer, but I'm just looking at this, I think one piece of veneer, I, I think I need a new, that's it, oh, I'm going to need a new roll of masking tape. I do have a spare one there. Uh, that's that's had the royal order of the strawberry. That has. Just get rid of that. There we go. Chuck that. It's close enough to being empty anyway. Go over to the stationery cupboard. <laughs> and get a new roll. That's the stuff I use, which I find quite good. Just the general purpose stuff. It's not the painter's one or anything like that. It's the cheapest one, but it's uh, Norton, their brand, and I find it is very, very good to use. You can buy, you know, uh, 15 rolls or whatever for $20, and I just don't like that stuff. The glue changes. Sometimes it sticks and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it comes away, sometimes it doesn't, whereas this stuff I can actually use as a, a tensioner if I'm putting solid edging in boxes. I hold it in with this stuff. Do you know how to find the end of a roll of tape?
Normally you can find it with your tongue. I couldn't find that one. Here we go. Because I was going the wrong way. Here it be. Okay. Look at that. A new roll of tape. And then what you do is you put that on your box like that. Well, actually, it doesn't matter so much in this case because oh dear, because we're going to go right through. Bada -bum. <laughs> then he uses a solid edge something so we can square it up so you want it squared up on the ends and also level on the top oh, a little bit to play we'll just give it a little And there we go. This jig here goes there and that sets out the distance I want the hinges to be at. So then they're going to be the same the whole time. I don't do a secondary one in there. The reason being hinges are um, different sizes and they're not square. So you might, they might look square and you think they're square, but if you cut identical square um, recesses for your hinges on all your boxes, then you go and fit your hinges, you will be sadly disappointed because the hinges aren't all exactly the same. Where's my knife gone? So what I do is I put that first one in and then I will mark the end of the hinge separately. And with these, I'm actually going to go right through. If it's, uh, what have we got? This is a slightly different box, and I did some marquetry in the top of it, but you'll notice it's got a fatter bit at the back. So for that, I'm going to have to just check out where the hinge sits on the back, and I won't be going all the way through, but when it's as thick as the width of the hinge, I really don't bother about 128th of an inch worth of timber. And what I do, is I mark all the hinges. So this is, each box has got its own mark. So I just copy that onto the hinge. And this is left. So I know that's the left hinge. This is right. I always put that mark on the top side. You can put it on the bottom side or whatever you like. It doesn't matter. But whatever you do, 
be consistent. You can chip them out with a chisel. I'm going to use a router. And on the router I've got, if I can find the blessed thing. I was using it the other day, where to go? There it is. Hang up on the floor where I left it. No, that's not. <laughs> ah, that's not the one I wanted. <whistles> ah, that's what I was looking for. Is that? No, that's not what I was looking for either. I've got... I've I've got another base similar to that, but it's not that one. It's one that gives me a lot more control. Which I had it yesterday, I was using it. So anyway, it doesn't matter. I'll just have one, one more look over here. One more butcher's over here. Well, that's the weirdest thing you ever did see in your life. Ah, here it is. I'm looking at the flipping thing. So what I've done here, I've made a larger base and I've got a handle on it. So I can now have total control over that router and good points of contact. Whereas if I'm using the standard base, you get a bit of a wobble up sometimes, which is not good. Now, well, I'm just, <laughs> I've got the wrong bit in there too. So what I might do, because it's getting late, I might just have a chat. Oh, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. See you, Rudy. Have a good sleep, mate. Thanks, James. Yes, that was I. <laughs> did you, yeah, but how did she smile at you? Was it a, oh, the poor man, or was it, oh, that man? You've got to think. You've got to think. Smiles can mean a lot of things, Trevor. Oh, there you go, John. Good on you. I tell you what, and I'm not promoting myself in any way, shape or form, but some of the best things I've ever learned when I've gone to workshops or courses are dropped comments. In other words, it's not what they're teaching. It's not what you went to learn. But they might just say, oh, just do so. And all of a sudden, I, I forget which one there was. One I went to and I thought it was a total waste of time, except there was one comment that this person made and it just opened up a whole new horizon to me. I forget what it was anyway. <laughs> Royal Order of the Strawberry, there you go. Never a lost cause. No, you're not a lost cause, Trevor. An interesting cause, I think they cause it.
calls it, call it. I was going to do a chisel, but now I'm going to do the router. But I'm going to do it tomorrow now. All right, that's it. Okay, well, I, I'm going to look for that other bit. It's past my proper curfew. And I did go over time, but I didn't. No, I didn't really because I was, I was doing stuff. So shh, I'll finish off that spindle this afternoon and I'll be in, it'll be in the good books. So anyway, well, we did get through that with no unscheduled interruptions. I was happy with that. Thank you for everyone that came on. New people that have joined, if you wouldn't mind smacking that subscribe button, I'd really appreciate that. Hit the like button and the, what's the other thing? Why am I looking over there? You're over here. Um, notification button. And I will be back tomorrow and we'll see if we can pull a full stream. But yeah, I don't know. I've been a little bit new, but <laughs> we'll see how we go. So this is Steve pulling the shed door down and saying, remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe, look after yourself, be kind to each other, follow the regulations. If you're in Queensland and you're going to the park, be careful and tolerant of the occasional person that might be a bit foolish. So exercise restraint, but be safe where you are, wherever you are. Look after yourselves. God bless and I look forward to having your company in the workshop, this workshop, at this workbench tomorrow where we can get into a bit more of this and we'll put the lid on that other box and we might do some varnishing. No, veneering. And I want to start a new stand for that dog box. So there you go. Until we meet again. Thank you. Good night. Good evening. Good morning. Good day. Bye. Thank you.